Good morning, Mayor and City Council. I'm James Gonzalez. I think everybody knows uh, me and Vice President of the San Jose Police Officers Association. I'm joined here with the, our teams, our negotiating teams from the police and uh, fire. Um, <clears throat> we come here on the heels of Wednesday night where we spent uh, over 10 hours uh, with your city team uh, in settlement talks regarding Measure B, uh, something that has plagued our city uh, for several years now. Uh, prior to Measure B and, and the effects and that's happened, we had about 1,400 officers. We were the smallest, most efficient police department in the nation. We have lost over a third of those officers uh, since Measure B. Uh, we've lost 80 officers this year uh, and continue to use them every day. Uh, what I tell uh, your city team every time that we meet is if we go another day before we meet, we will lose additional officers. Uh, we met Wednesday uh, evening, and uh, yesterday, Brian Meisner, a 25-year veteran, uh, left uh, yesterday. Um, if today there's not resolution to Measure B or progress forward, we will lose additional officers before we meet again. There is not a rank in this police department that does not have uh, applications in with other agencies. Uh, the prestigious homicide commander will be leaving um, to be the chief of Evergreen College uh, very soon. Uh, whether you just got here, the, your first day, uh, as three weeks ago when our academy started and three recruits quit on the first day, uh, or you've been here 25 years like uh, Tommy Morales was, or you were the instructor of the police academy who several weeks ago left for Palo Alto and is now a lieutenant there. Uh, every day that goes by, we lose more officers. And what we don't see is an urgency. We don't see an urgency to fix Measure B to come to resolution of this. What we do see is many, many hours being spent on the Trussell Bridge or medical marijuana or all these other items that the council has spent many, many hours deliberating. And this is the first time we have a four-hour block for the council to discuss Measure B, the largest issue I have ever seen the city have to tackle. Uh, that is unacceptable. And we uh, are here in the building today we will be here the entire time you were in there to offer real-time uh, answers, to respond to proposals, to do whatever it takes to get Measure B resolved. Uh, if council goes on vacation without resolving Measure B, it will send a message that the new mayor and new city council had six months to tackle this issue and essentially have gone nowhere. That is a message that the, this police force in this city cannot a stand to hear. We have hundreds of vacancies uh, in our city and in our police department. And as we have 80 officers that have left so far, uh, by the time you come back for vacation, that well could be over 100. The next police academy uh, is predicted to have uh, less than 10 people in it. That's an academy that holds 60. If you don't think that the conditions that San Jose are under, the Measure B cloud that uh, hovers over uh, recruiting in this city uh, can continue as it is, uh, then I don't know what to say. Uh, we are coming up on July, where on July 15th, uh, the court records will be certified uh, in the appeal process for Measure B. Millions and millions of dollars have been spent by our side and your side fighting each other. If we go back into litigation, if we are back in court, as we will be starting on July 15th, a resolution to Measure B certainly is, is not likely. Being at battle with your employer is not an environment that anyone wants to work at. And if July 15th comes and we are back in court and our members have to shell out millions of dollars again to help resolve this, then uh, I think a resolution is much less likely. The time to act is now. The breaking point is now. I don't know what it's going to take for this council and this city to take this serious, to put the time in it's going to take to resolve it. The July 15th deadline, I think, is, is, is a very important thing. Chris Platten, attorney for the firefighters, will talk a little bit more about that. Mr. Platten. Good morning, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Uh, Christopher Platten, I have the privilege of representing not only Firefighters Local 230, but International Federation of Professional and Technical Employees Local 21 and the Operating Engineers Local 3. Uh, as my uh, colleague and uh, uh, our officer, Mr. Gonzalez, has indicated, uh, in 18 days, the Superior Court Clerk will certify to the Sixth District Court of Appeal 
uh, the documents and the appeal process on Judge Lucas's ruling, which largely favored the various plaintiffs in that litigation, will move forward. We will now commence to spend yet additional millions of dollars to litigate a matter that uh, is unconscionable. Yesterday, I had the uh, privilege of addressing a panel at the conference in Monterey of the League of California Cities. Uh, the conference was for those elected officials in local agencies across the state of California. The topic of the panel was labor relations, how to have good ones and how to have bad ones. And the exercise involved uh, an analysis of what's happened here in the city of San Jose since 2012. Uh, I had numerous elected officials from within this county and from other local jurisdictions within the state come up to me afterwards, spent an hour afterwards uh, answering questions. And again and again and again, uh, they thanked me for the presentation, not because they agreed with everything I said, but because they knew that there were individuals out there who were willing to deal uh, collectively in good faith to resolve uh, the difficulties and the challenges that face local government, both in terms of revenue generation and in terms of employee benefit costs. They did not want to replicate the history that we have developed here in the city of San Jose. You should not want to replicate and continue the history that we have here in the city of San Jose. You should want to bring to a close an equitable solution to the issue that has divided this city and has pro uh, produced a nuanced series of waves of problems in the employee relationship between the employees of the city of San Jose, the citizens of the city of San Jose, and the elected officials of the city of San Jose. If we do not do that, we will again spend ungodly amounts of money, and I will tell you quite frankly, as I've spoken to this council before, the plaintiffs will prevail, and that will cost even more money to this city. That sort of division, that sort of unalterable non-action is simply not acceptable. It's not acceptable from your perspective. It's not acceptable from the perspective of the citizens of this city. It is not just the police department, significant and dangerous, although that is, that is in, in trouble. There are 600 plus openings in the non-safety positions in this city. I had elected officials from other jurisdictions within this county yesterday thank me for the fact that they've been able to employ some of your top people in non-safety positions because they have dealt collectively, collaboratively, and in good faith to resolve the challenges that were presented to us by virtue of the 2008-2009 Wall Street crash and the consequences to employee benefit costs. What is lacking here in the city of San Jose is will, political will, and only you can provide that. We either do it or we don't. In the end, this does not need to be like a Charles Dickens novel where it's the lawyers picking over what's left of the carcass of the city and of the employee groups. But if that is to be the course, there will be a price to pay. And that will be a price that will be borne by my family, your families, the children, the citizens, the aged, the working folks of this city. We have an alternative. And the alternative is to sit down in good faith, negotiate, negotiate out agreements that will resolve the conundrum that we've been placed into. Let's do that. Thank you, Mr. Button. Is there any other member of the public who would like to speak? If not,